Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Back in our Father's Word, new book today, Book of Jude. A very short book just before the great book of Revelation, but a fantastic book. Uh, a lot of information. And so let's, without further ado, Jude is the Greek for Judah, okay, so, and that, of course, means praise. So, book of Jude, chapter 1, which is the only chapter there is, in verse 1, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified, that's set aside by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Of course, and call means God's elect. Now, if it is, it is good that they bring forth brother of James and that this is done in brotherly love, because if you, I'm not going to turn you there, but make a note of Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, and you'll find out who else uh, Jude is the brother of. And, um, you will find that he was one of the children of Mary in Matthew 13, 55, along with James and so forth. Verse 2, Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. That, that, that be increased. If you stay in God's Word, if you concentrate on His Word, it's as simple as exercising your mind in His Word Naturally, you're going to increase the peace and the love. It's going to be multiplied in your family, in your life, and you're going to have that happiness. It's a beautiful thing to behold in a troubled world to be able to have that peace of mind because you're under the wing of the Creator of all things. you got no, no problems that you can't handle. Verse 3. Beloved, when, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I, I wanted to write you a sweet little letter that would just encourage you to find salvation. But then the truth won't allow that. I'm going to have to exhort means uh, we're, we're, going to, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of the situation. What's really happening and what you want to exercise your mind in in bringing to remembrance things that were so that you know what's going to be. <clears throat> and so he... He wanted to write that sweet little letter. Instead, this follows, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unaware secretly who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of God into, the, into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in other words, we're talking here fallen angels. We're talking about those that follow Satan, that, that they do turn away from the truth. And it goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 6, where the Nephilim, the fallen angels, instead of being born to woman, chose to seduce woman. And Geber were born giants. It was, there were hybrids. Is very much against the plan of salvation because here it became impossible that they would leave the place whereby they were supposed to, to, 
to, to wait upon that being born from above, but it never happened for them. They rather chose to depart. Verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance. I'm, we're, we're going to shake the bushes. You're going to find out. Th though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. He had to take a whole generation that refused to enter the promised land. Now, what has been will be again. We're about to start knocking on the door of entering the promised land. Are you going to go? Do you need to know what happened to that generation that he killed right there in the desert? He would not let them enter. It's, it's going to happen again in a spiritual sense uh, through, through the time of the millennium. And that's why you want to bear these things in remembrance whereby this doesn't happen to you. And God is able to open that door with the key of David in your hand, which means the knowledge in your forehead of what opens doors and what closes them. Verse 6, And the angels which kept not their first estate, that's the fallen angels, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And, and so it is. If you want to know what happens to them, you can read of it in Revelation chapter 11. And uh, God makes short work of them. What, 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 what habitation did they leave? Paradise. They were in heaven. And they saw the daughters of Adam, through which Christ ultimately, the Savior, would be born. And as Satan tried to destroy that birthright through Eve and failed, then he tried again to destroy the birthright through the eighth day creation. That may be a little deep for some. Don't worry, put it on the shelf. It'll be, it'll be fine. But that's what it means, quite simply. They left paradise. That's where angels are supposed to abide, okay? Angels don't abide on earth necessarily. And, and uh, this is why they are called fallen, because they fell from the grace of God. They fell from paradise where, whereby they should have, along as you have, been born a woman to make your own mind up, born innocent, a babe, whether you're going to love God or whether you're going to follow Satan. That's, that's your choice. But um, So there you have it. These people are locked away. They've already had their judgment day because they violated the very plan of God by departing paradise without his permission. It does not pay to not follow God's plan. Let's go with the next verse, please. Verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, that means same-sex same flesh, and set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. It's your choice. Whatever, whatever you choose, hey, if you enjoy that type of thing, I mean, I, I would get some clothes that will withstand much heat because it's coming. And, and that, that eternal fire will happen. Eternal in the sense that God is a consuming fire and he blots out those that don't meet the, the, the plan of God that have gone the way of, of the evil ones. Verse 8, likewise also, these filthy dreamers, dreaming in their own mind, defile the flesh and despise dominion. That's to say the plan of God, and authority, so to speak, and speak evil of dignities. That's to say his majesty, almighty God. They don't, 
They don't mind speaking evil of him at all. They make fun of Christianity. They make fun of people that would follow him and believe upon him. Why? To get away with their lascivious ways. To, to, to uh, unfortunately, determine the outcome of their very life. It could have been eternal, but it will not be. And I'm not judging. If they do not change, their life will end. It will be blotted out. And hey, it's your choice. It doesn't matter. A person, a person writes their own um, uh, outcome in the book of life by your life. If you listen to God's word and obey him and take his authority and worship his majesty, then you're his child. He will love you. He will lead you. He will protect you. But if you want to go the way of the world, hey, go for it. But I guarantee you the penalty is severe. And it, it will happen. There's no ifs, no ends, no maybes. It, the outcome is eternal fire, destruction. Verse 9, Yet Michael, the archangel, when, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing, railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. Don't ever argue with Satan. Let the Lord rebuke him, get him behind you. Don't have anything to do with Why? Why would Satan be looking for Moses' bones? There's a lot of history tied up in that one little verse. A lot of knowledge. Who was Moses? Moses is the one that did not fear. He climbed Mount Sinai went right, walked right up to the fiery bush to find salvation for the people he was leading. Not for himself, but he did it for the people. And, and, and naturally, why he was the lawgiver. And Satan cannot stand the law. And that's why he wanted the bones of Moses. But also, you'll remember in the very last chapter of Deuteronomy, Moses supposedly died. Would God let anyone bury him? Would God let anyone know where those bones are? Answer, no, he would not. God himself took Moses. He would not let man touch him. And yet, at the same time to make it more complicated for some, who showed up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus Christ many years later? None other than Moses. Well, how did he get there? He was transfigured, of course. It's written that he was transfigured in, 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 on the Mount of Transfiguration. That's what it was all about. Duh. Some people have so much trouble with that. It's so complicated when it's all laid out in God's Word. So simple. God took him. He would not let Satan near him. And he came back on that Mount of Transfiguration along with Elijah, the, the uh, prophet of prophets, and Moses, the lawgiver of the lawgivers. And with the law and the prophet, we have God's word. So, uh, but, but Michael himself would not challenge or contend with Satan. And that, that you, you want to learn a lesson from that. He can be very convincing. And when he comes at the sixth trump, and you have to wait through that sixth trump before Christ returns at the seventh, there's going to be many things happening powerful things because he's supernatural that will deceive many people and many people will go after him believing he is the Christ. Why? Because they haven't been taught. 
It's that simple. This is why Jude said, I, I, I'd like to just write a little salvation thing, but you've got to know what happened before. You've got to not let it slip from your mind. Verse 10, But these speak evil of those things which they knew not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. They destroy themselves because they let the animalistic uh, mind and dream rule their life. Verse 11, Woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain. He was a murderer and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. Uh, I mean, every, everything was what's in it for me. That's what Balaam was. Uh, and Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. Cori is Cori, which is, what did Cora do? He finally said to Moses, hey, hey, big shot. Oh, I'm paraphrasing here a little bit. What are you doing leading us? I, I, I'm a leader. I could be the leader. I, I can lead these people just like you. The only one thing. God chose Moses, not Korah. So uh, Moses then, uh, the contention be begins, and God told Moses to divide the camp. You get on this side, leave him on that side, and a new thing happened. A crevice opened in the soil, and all that followed Korah fell into the crevice and were consumed by the earth itself. In other words, God's on the throne. Things are going to go down as God insists. Verse 12, these are spots in your feast of charity. There are spots where love is taught. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, they, they never produce anything. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots. What is twice dead? You want to think about it. We have one death, that's death of the flesh. We're all pretty familiar with that. We've all lost loved ones uh, this time or the other. But what is this twice dead? Well, you can read of it in Matthew chapter 10, uh, along 25, 28, where, Christ, where God himself says, don't, fe don't, don't uh, fear those who can take the flesh body but fear rather he who can take the flesh in death as well as the soul. The soul is the second death. <clears throat> so therefore, their soul will die. That will be the end. And so it is. Uh, by the roots, simply th th those evil, wicked roots are cut off, nipped in the bud, never to be with us again. Uh, wh what were they good for? Trees don't produce. Clouds don't produce rain. They're worthless. Good riddance is what God would say. Verse 13, raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. <clears throat> you can read of this in Revelation 11, chapter 11, verse 13. When, when the seventh trump sounds, 7,000 die instantly in the streets of Jerusalem. It's these fallen angels that are kicked out of heaven with Satan. Uh, I said you could read it for yourself. Uh, uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 13. Verse 14. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam. Oh, we're going back a long way here. Seventh born from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his, his saints. Did you know that Enoch was a preacher? Did you know that he was a prophet? Do you know that 
while those fallen angels were seducing the daughters of Adam, that Enoch was standing against it strongly. And there was a, a teaching God's word. And so much came against him that God transfigured him. He was not. Why? Because God took him. And, and so it is. Always stay with the truth of God's word and be blessed. Or you've got a choice to go another way. I hope your choice is for blessings in the strong arm of God around you rather than the ways of, of Cain or Korah. Verse 15, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him and 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 so it is you know it can be a if, if you were not to trust almighty god and have faith in him then it would be a little tough trip but we know that god will never leave you he will never forsake you as it's written in the great book of hebrews which we just finished and as long as he is with you you're in good shape You've got nothing to worry about. I know it's ungodly what they do, and I know that it, it, it irritates us because we can't stand that that is unnatural because it's only human nature that you accept what is natural. If it's unnatural, the very hair on the back of your neck stands up. If you're natural, if you're a child of God, and, and so it is. So uh, don't, don't let them see you sweat on your first cruise. You stand firm. Verse 16. These are murmurs, complainers, walking after their own lust. They don't care what God says. And their mouth speaking great swelling words, how great they are having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. They're a bunch of grumblers, complainers, and, and braggarts, unfortunately, is what is referred to here in part two, is, is uh, that they would simply brag their way and, and um, claim to be things they're not. And why? They don't care. In other words, you have to believe that God's word is true, or you would not necessarily fear what was approaching. And it's at the door. But they would still, if drawn to that unnatural affection, would go away from God and, well, why do you mean unnatural? Anything that isn't of God is unnatural because God is supernatural. You want to stay in his camp. Verse 17, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that what? 18. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Do, do you know where that's written? That's written in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. He said, he said these mockers are going to come. And they're going to say, it's, it, there's nothing new under the sun. It's all like it was the first day. He's not coming. You might as well live it up. And of course, what is the subject of that third chapter of 2 Peter? The third chapter is the three earth eons of time. The three heavenly eons of time. Called the world, but it's the, it's the same world, just a different age. And it lets you know what transpires there that bring people to God or that cause them to simply close their eyes and walk away. 
Why? Because their own lust and passions pull them away from the Word of God. Next verse, please. Verse 19. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit. This causes divisions. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, how can He talk to you? How can God communicate with you if you do not have the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit? That's God's Spirit. And certainly, um, they separate themselves. Don't read over that. You didn't do it. No one else did it. They separated themselves because that's what they chose. It is written in the book of life, and they will answer to that. The punishment many times is destruction. If that's what you want, hey, go for it. But eternal life is so sweet. Verse 20, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, talking to God, asking His guidance. Do you, you remember back in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, what did it say? And uh, there, in, it really is a beautiful thing, and I'm going to, you'll remember it, but I'm turning there anyway. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, reads like this. But without faith, that's believe. It is impossible to please him, our Father. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you want any reward, you're going to seek him, and you're going to seek him well. That's as it is. And, and so it is that you, they, they, you're going to have the gainsayer that will always say, it's not going to happen. Believe me, it is happening. It's happening before your very eyes. Have you read the word? It is written, and it's coming to pass exactly as it's written. Next verse, please. Verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy, that's the unmerited favor, you don't deserve it, but he'll give it to you if you believe. Of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Live eternally. It's there for the taking, for loving him, for asking for his protection. You gain that eternal life rather than to be blotted out. Eternally having that peace. Verse 22. And of some have compassion making a difference. God's elect, one of their marks is they will have compassion. They don't pray for everything for themselves. They pray for knowledge to be able to help others, their brothers and sisters, so that they can show them the way. Why? Because they care. Caring is compassion. And it's just a mark of one of God's elect. It's somebody that cares. Verse 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Then that's the way it is. And Zechariah 3, 4, and 5 will give you a little better look into that. There are some will keep doing that, and the old spotted by the flesh means it made it unclean. You clean the act up and stand in good standing with God. Clouds that produce water, trees and vegetables that produce fruit, and an individual that people like to hear, whereby it saves souls. Seed planting. Verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, let me read that again, and you absorb it real well. 
Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. That, that is, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing to be in that position. That's why you don't want to go the way of Balaam. That's why you don't want to go the way of Cain or Korah. You want to hear the word through the Holy Spirit. And, and what does it do? It keeps you from falling. Falling where? Falling out of grace with Almighty God into the darkness that these lost ones walk in. You, you wallow in the mire with them. You don't want that. You want to enjoy and celebrate that very truth, how precious it is. Verse 25, to complete the, the book. To the only wise God, our Savior, He's your what? He's your Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and and ever amen that's that that's the way it is that power and that majesty belongs to he and he alone there will be one that will be coming is what he's telling you here that will claim to have that power but it's not according to god's word it's according to the mouth of of, of the false messiah he will cause many people to believe upon him because he is fantastic when it comes to deception. He's the deceiver of deceivers. Jude lays it out whereby you have a very clear picture of what's going down, what has been. See that you're not deceived. All right, bless your hearts. Listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And there we are back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good for in Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, and all over Canada. If the Spirit moves and you have a question, you share it. Won't you do that? We have one request that you do not ask a question concerning a reverend, a denomination, or an organization. Why? We're not going to judge people because we have a judge. It's our Father. But you do have the right for spiritual discernment to know whether you believe something or not. That's your God-given power from on high after having exercised your mind in what is written, written from and by our Heavenly Father. That will always keep you out of trouble. Those of you that listen by shortwave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you. And your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. Again, always a pleasure. Now, you got a prayer request. You don't need the number. You don't need an address. Why? Well, God knows even what you're thinking. You don't have to open your mouth. He's a heart knower. And he does know your heart. No one can ever prevent you from praying. That is your line of communication with our Heavenly Father. And it is from He that all blessings flow. So it's best communication is a beautiful thing. All trouble stems from lack of communication. 
trouble in families that don't communicate, communities that don't communicate, and nations that don't communicate. That's where your trouble begins. So let's go to his throne. Father, around the world we come. We ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father. Touch in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Okay, and question time. We're going to go with Elizabeth from California. Do we sow seeds in a senior citizen's home, what they call a vineyard in the Bible, and how do we sow seeds if you're handicapped and in having a hard time walking? Well, if, you know, God opens ways for seeds to be planted. And, you know, it only takes one to make the whole life worthwhile. You're not going to convert everybody that comes in contact with you. It's just there's, there's more, there are more wicked people in the world than there are good. And that's, that, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But you're going to occasionally find that one that craves truth, that craves God's knowledge, and wants God's blessings. That's why you plant seeds when you get an opportunity. Don't push it. Don't force it. I have the old saying always, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make him drink. So be patient. That's, that's the mark of one of God's elect, is to have patience. Donna from Arkansas. Pastor, I was asked if there was anything in Father's Word that would help a mother with their children growing up and leaving the nest. She's having a hard time with this. Well, raise a, raise a child up in the way of the Lord and he'll not depart. Um, you know, this is, what, this is why they have their own life. You can't hang on to them forever. And they have to make their own way because they are really children of God. And they have to make that impression you know, sometimes you can shelter someone from the ways of the world to the point that you can kind of spoil them. And you don't want to do that. You want to, you want to be proud of them when they can make their own way and make a mark in the world. It's not that difficult. And certainly, uh, it, it is true that you will, you miss them because you, you gave birth to them and you've had them around you all that time and it takes a little getting used to. It's a, it's a bit of a shock. But then even 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 works for this. What happens to you is not uncommon. In other words, it happens to all of us that the children leave the nest. And God will never test you over what you can handle, and he will always show you a way through. Trust him for it. Tell, tell her that. Shannon from Nevada. During a lesson on Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, you said this comes from Psalms 40, verse 7. As I was reading Psalms 40, what you were reading I could not find. If you can recall, please give me the scripture you quoted, 6, 12, 13. Well, it, it is. It's where Christ was saying, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. And what was Christ quoting? He was quoting Psalms 40, uh, a verse, um, really verse 6 through the 7 and 8. He quoted several of those verses. Now, there are some Bibles that have the Psalms misnumbered. And I'm not saying that yours does. I'm saying it is a possibility. So instead of looking at 40, you might look at 39 or 41. I know that's a great disadvantage, but that's the way it goes, especially Septuagint as well as others. But Christ was quoting it. That's where it is written, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It means that years before Christ walked the earth, back in Psalms 40, 
that declared that he was the book. What does that mean? He was the Word of God. And when it is the Word of God, you should listen. And that's why we read the Scripture, and that's why it's there. Okay, a standard King James, Psalms 40, you'll find it. When referring to a pastor or a minister, is it wrong or right to also include reverend? Well, you know, everyone has his, I don't judge anyone, but everybody has their own um, uh, convictions. I am very uncomfortable with being called reverend. I am a pastor, uh, and I don't choose to be revered. Uh, I choose rather that you revere God, our Father, that you love Him, and naturally we love each other. But I do not believe in reverencing man. I've, I've I've been around men for many years. I've fought with them in combat. I've been with them through thick and thin and times of peace. And I still, I've had a lot of good friends, but I've never met one that I'm going to revere. I only revere our Heavenly Father. Now, th that's a personal choice. What what you do, if somebody wishes to be called that and you're sitting under their ministry, well, so be it. But um, I can almost tell when someone says they've been listening to me for a long time, they may say, Reverend Murphy, I've been listening to you for many years. Well, that kind of doesn't ring a bell in a way because I don't like to be called Reverend and my name is not Murphy. But it happens, all right? Uh, Susie from Oklahoma. I've lost my husband, and I'm very lonely. Sometimes I feel suicidal. My friend said maybe I should go to counsel. I watch you every day, and I read my Bible. Why do I have to go to counsel when I do believe in God and the Bible? Well, if you believe, uh, Susie, in God and the Bible, you, you know from our study just in Hebrews, you don't have to be lonely. God has stated right there, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. I'm always with you. So though I, I know that you miss your husband. It's like half of you is gone for a while. And, but you'll, you will adapt. And as long as you're breathing air, God has something for you to do. And feeling suicidal is murder. You are murdering one of God's children. The penalty for that is pretty severe. If you want to have something to be depressed about, that's something to be depressed about because you kind of just chunk everything. Um, you uh, would not be on the same side of paradise as even as your husband. So as long as God has something for you to do here on earth, you keep at it, keep busy. I, I'm going to tell you one way that if you, we had a question earlier of somebody's talking about planting a seed in a senior citizen's home. Go to a senior citizen's home and see who you can help there. You know, help comes in many ways, like picking people up, tell them have a nice day. Um, uh, take care of yourself. Can I help you do something? It, it, it's a wonderful thing when you can do that. Is be, God has a purpose for you. You're still here. L don't let him down. Johnny from Texas. Is it going to be accepting the mark of the beast if I cash my SSI check? You, you Understand this. The only way you receive the mark of the beast is in your forehead. That's where your brain is. It means you worship him. And cashing a check doesn't cause you to worship Antichrist. Now, if it came to this, if they were to come out with a new one world money, 
and you had to worship the leader, Antichrist, to receive it, then that would be a different story, okay? So it, it is a thing of worship. We worship no one other than God himself. And, and um, don't ever let anyone take that away from you. There is, no, there is no prize worth turning your back on God. That's pure bitterness. So, but as far as cashing the check and not having to worship the leader, you're fine. Um, we don't know what the rules will be at that time, but we'll find out. God still takes care of his own. Glenn from Maine. How long will the fifth trump last before the Antichrist is cast out of heaven and the sixth trump? I know a lot of people will be deceived more than I dare say, one third. Well, it'll be at least that many or more. Uh, you know, the time isn't exactly given because the fifth trump is a time of teaching. And if you read the very first verses of chapter 7, the great book of Revelation, until that seal of truth is planted in the forehead of all of God's witnesses, the end can't happen. And, but as long as we spread the word, the real true word and message of God, then that's when the four winds, which always indicate the end of the time, will come together and consummate the end of this age. It, it will happen. Michael from Illinois, my question, please explain whether Satan and all who follow him will be consumed in the lake of fire or be tormented, punished in hell for all eternity. Well, where is hell? Well, it's right there in heaven. It's a lake of fire. <clears throat> well, let me ask you something. Do you believe that our Heavenly Father would put you in a heaven where you look over here and a lot of your relatives are, are burning up? They're screaming. They're in pain. They're crying out. And you're enjoying heaven? What's wrong with that picture? Well, there's a lot wrong with it. <clears throat> Excuse me, because if you read Revelation 21, there's no tears shed in heaven. So somebody can't be in a lake of fire screaming and crying and be there. It's not going to happen. They are blotted out. I, I teach this many times. If you have a companion Bible, Psalms 37 has an appendix that lets you know exactly what happens to them for the eternity. They go up in smoke. Or you can read the very penalty of Satan himself in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 18 and 19, where he is doing the role of king of Tyre, which means rock. He's not our rock. Uh, he's turned to ashes from within. When you're turned to ashes from within, that is a Hebraism that means finality. It's over. Uh, Pastor Murray, sir, my question is, were there two angelic rebellions, one in the first earth age and the second in Noah's time? That's true. Some of the... You can read of the fallen angels in, in Genesis chapter 6 during Noah's time. But the, the katabo, I'll say it what it's called, the overturn was very severe compared to Noah's flood. Noah's flood was just heavy rain. And in 40 days or in a short period of time, a dove, um, in a five-month period, I should say, a dove went and brought back an olive leaf. It means that, that tree was not destroyed. But when you read in Jeremiah chapter 4, in that first overthrow, before in the first earth age, there was nothing left 
God said, you better listen to me once before I cleanse, I cleanse this earth. And if you mess with me, I'll do it again. And, um, and of course he hasn't, but he could if uh, it wasn't for God's elect that dragged people right out of that fire. And so it is. Okay, this would be um, uh, Carla from California. My question is, I don't understand what I've seen in churches who get the Holy Spirit and they speak unknown languages. What are they doing and who's doing it to them? Well, I, I don't like to judge churches, but I, will, I am a teacher. And I teach what, about the Pentecostal tongue. What is the Pentecostal tongue? Well, go by what the Bible says. It's written. Always take God's word over man's. In Acts chapter 2, verse 7, it says the mystery wasn't they spoke in unknown tongues. But the mystery was that it was cloven, meaning it came out in every language of the world because it wasn't the person speaking, it was the Holy Spirit. And it was not unknown, but it was known by every person that heard it, whether they were Chinese, Russian, Japanese, or English, or Latin, doesn't matter. They all understood it at the same time, perfect, because it was God through the Holy Spirit speaking through them, not unknown. And better than that, if you want to know what was said, you can go to chapter 2 of the great book of Joel, and it will tell you what was said on that day uh, on the, with the Pentecostal tongue. Uh, Martha from Georgia. Pa Pastor Murray, what do the ethnos people in Israel have different responsibilities as to bringing God's plan together. Well, God, God has always had different plans for different people. The, the um, ethnic peoples, the reason being, this is, if you read uh, Revelation 21, your answer is basically there. Because in the eternity, the word nations, as it is used there in the Greek, is ethnos. It means here comes kings and queens and nations coming from all around to worship God in Jerusalem. So, so naturally, the ethnic people even have their own kings and queens, even in the eternity. We don't. We only have one. But it is written many times, and God's elect and the responsibility of the house of Judah and the house of Israel, they must fulfill those plans. And that's why God has election. That's to say people that knew the truth in the first earth age and were not deceived by Satan. He says in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, you don't, speaking to the elect, many times you don't even know what to pray for or ask. And that's why I intercede in your life and I move you. Uh, in other words, you were foreordained. You're going to be where I want you. And you're going to do what I want you to do. And this is why God will thump your gourd occasionally if you get out of that cycle. And then he tells them in the next verse, after foreordination, that they are the first fruits. And... Uh, and, and so it is. Okay, we'll go with um, Lucille from Nevada. I am so happy that I found you on, well, good, thank you. I have a question. If the sixth Trump and Satan comes, he will be here five months, and we may not be aware of him for two and a half months, but at the end of this period, from May to September, the locust period, then the seventh trump and Christ will come. We will be changed in the blink of an eye 
from our physical body to our spiritual body. My question is, if Jesus is in a different dimension and we are in our spiritual body, then how can we still be on planet Earth? There's different dimensions here on Earth. This is why, this is why God showed up. This is why Christ showed up with Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. They were in a different dimension, but they were right here. When God is ready for us to see into that dimension, you have heard me say before, as a pastor, I've been beside deathbeds where people recognized and spoke to and talked to loved ones that died years before. But that loved one came apparently to comfort them and to take them across, that is to say, into paradise. So they're, they're, they were in a different dimension because I couldn't see them. But the person many times I was very familiar with, and I could see the recognition in their eye that they certainly saw them. So dimensions is no big deal. All right, hey, we're out of time. I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word. Most of all, God loves you for it. When, when, that's what he wants to hear from you. When you read the letter he has sent to you, to obey it, to love him for being gracious. And when you make his day, boy, is he going to make yours. You can count on it. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings if we have helped you. You help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless God. He will always bless you. Most important, though, listen to me. Listen good now. You stay in his word. Every day in his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Jesus is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas. 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program and God bless you.